Welcome to the Mad Max Minute presents Water's End, a reading of Peter Rader's 1991 polished second revision of Waterworld. Due to coarse language and depictions of violence, listener discretion is advised. Last time, Helen and Enola escaped a pirate attack and stowed away aboard Morgan's boat, narrowly surviving a devastating storm. This is part two in the clutches of the pirate lord. Cut two. A periscope POV. Warning. Crosshairs and scale markings penning across the ocean. Flat blue horizon for 75 degrees, then a barge. A green flag is flapping from its mast. It's the Miranda. Fune! Fune! Shogyo! On the Miranda, Helen and Enola are busy unraveling a trawling net. Morgan feeding the horse when there is a crashing sound of waves. A mass of water rises up beside the barge revealing a small, antiquated submarine. Morgan races inside the bridge and emerges instantly with his spear gun and a pistol. He shouts at the women. Get out of sight! Quick! Morgan takes cover behind a barrel. The submarine hatch squeaks open. Two Japanese guys emerge. One is a fat sumo wrestler type with a shaved head. The other is an old man with an endless white beard. The fat guy has tattoos all over his body, Yakuza style. He is giggling nervously, his finger twitching on the trigger of a crossbow. The old man unfurls a small green flag and waves it. Morgan eyes them suspiciously, his guns drawn. You speak English? I do. A completely bald black woman emerges from the hatch. She is Wanda, tough but somehow endearing. What do you want? We need spark plugs. Got any? Maybe. What are you trading? Another Japanese with round gold spectacles emerges carrying a bundle. He holds it up. Gill net. 200 yards long. No holes. I got all the nets I need. Wanda translates for the Japanese. The old man seems to be the boss. Wanda is just the interpreter. They come to a decision. How about hydro? 5 G's for 6 plugs. 10. Translation. Another debate. Fatty points to the horse and says something to Wanda. The animal. Would you trade it? No. No way. Enola turns to Helen as the Japanese debate some more. Why would they want the animal on their submarine? They want to eat it. Anola reacts in disgust. Wanda turns back with their decision. Okay, you're on. Ten G's. Spectacles goes below and gets two jugs of water. Tell him to drink some. Spectacles pulls the jug to his lips and takes a swig. He smiles. The other one, too. He tries the second. Morgan waits for him to swallow, but he can't fake it anymore. He spits the salt water back into the ocean. The Japanese grin sheepishly. (laughs) <laughs> real cute. Hey, give us a break. It's tough getting hydro in a sub. Okay, five gallons. But there's one more thing. Morgan stands and points to Helen and Enola. Take these two to a flotilla. Helen stands up, enraged. You can't hand us over to these thugs. That's right, Drifter. You think we're running a ferry service? Then no deal. He turns to Helen. They're harmless. Look at them. Meanwhile, Wanda translates, and Fatty smiles broadly. He looks at Helen lecherously. I don't like them. I don't want to go. You're much safer on a sub. No pirates, no hurricanes. It's the quickest way you're going to get to another flotilla. Morgan grabs six spark plugs from a locker. Helen looks shattered. I can't take responsibility for you anymore. Drifters just don't take passengers. I guess I was right about you. Yeah, maybe you were. You know how many people I've had to kill just to stay alive? Helen hesitates. She's about to speak, but doesn't. He softens. We're looking for different things. Then she plays her trump card. Listen, you know what Enola said about her tattoo? It's true. We're going to get to Water's End. I'll cut you in. I don't believe in Water's End. The Japanese throw down a boarding plank. Spectacles carries the water across and snatches the plugs from Morgan's hands. Fatty grabs Helen by the arm. Get your hands off of me, Jumbo! Helen glares at Morgan. I've always been solo. The Japanese escort the women across the plank. Helen. She turns. Morgan tosses her his survival knife in its sheath. Do what you gotta do. The Japanese move to intercept the knife, but Helen pulls it out of the air. On the fly, she has yanked the gleaming blade out of its sheath and flashed it up in warning. The Japanese are impressed. Obviously, Helen knows her way around a knife. She turns back to Morgan and scowls at him. He averts his eyes and moves towards his horse. 
The Japanese push the women below and pull back the plank. See you on the waves, Drifter. They close the hatch and dive. Morgan turns back and watches the bubbles ripple to the surface as the sub sinks and sinks. Cut to Inside the Sub, Night. The galley is a cramped, claustrophobic affair with steam hissing from leaky valves. Water drips down in several locations, causing swamps of moss and corrosion. Helen and Enola are sleeping in a pair of hammocks which creak back and forth with the currents. A large, dark form sneaks up on them. It's Fatty, holding a rope. He reaches down for Helen's wrist. But she springs, bolt upright, knife drawn. Enola blinks her eyes sleepily. I'm warning you, hippo. You touch me, you're sashimi. Fatty withdraws, grunting obscenities under his breath. Cut to the Miranda, day. Morgan has returned his barge to a semblance of order. He is busy at the stern hauling in the kelp trawling nets, pulling the dripping strands of kelp into a big pile. Then he notices something shiny caught in the rope netting. He reaches for it. Anola's amulet. Morgan holds it up in the sun. He stares at the glass lens in disbelief, gazes out towards the empty horizon, looks back at the lens, pensive. As if on cue, the horse trots up to him. They stare at each other like lonely bachelors. Don't look at me like that. I already had my family. Cut to the sub-engine room, day. The submarine's antiquated engine churns round and round like a broken blender. Wanda is replacing the spark plugs, oiling the valves. Helen's watching her while Enola wanders about aimlessly. Dahir will try to get in your pants. That two-timing SOB. He's getting sick of me. I can feel it. I like tying him up. You know, kinky stuff. Helen makes a face. Enola walks up, petulant and grumpy. I miss him. Who? The Drifter. How can you miss a pirate? Enola looks at her, frowning. Cut to Periscope POV, a large flotilla. Angle on spectacles. He pulls away from the eyepiece and calls out to the others. The Japanese begin jabbering amongst themselves. What's going on? A flotilla. They think they'll get 30 gallons of gas for you? Did they say anything special about my girl? No. Why? Just wondering. Cut to the surface. The sub emerges near a nondescript platform in the center of a maze of boats. The hatch squeaks open. Fatty pops his head out. Immediately, several men race over with machine guns. A one-legged man climbs down from a crow's nest with a dueling pistol. Two men swing onto a nearby platform on ropes with daggers in their mouths. Everyone has a triangular mark on their forehead. Hi-ho, mates. Dropped in for tea, did we? Cut to later. The prisoners are escorted by a platoon of pirates towards the main platform. Helen looks around grimly. Enola notices a familiar face among the escort. It's Troy. But he looks like a pirate now. War paint, dreadlocks. He's carrying a spear. Troy! It's me! Shh! I can't talk to you. Cut to the prisoner stockade boat. Angel stares out of the small barred window, watching the commotion. Son of a bitch. Look who's here. Cut to the throne platform. The procession arrives under the great water tower. The trio of Japanese bow deferentially. Wanda, Helen, and Enola stand alongside. There is a wave of murmuring among the pirates as fingers point towards Enola's tattoo. Carlos moves up to the throne to brief Laszlo. The Japs say they know nothing. They stole him from a drifter. The woman and kid ain't talking. Keep Blubber Belly alive. Kill his mates in a way no one will forget. Carlos walks up to the Japanese trio. Nonchalantly, he slips his hands into a pair of rubber gloves. The Japanese eye him cautiously. What's he doing? A couple of pirates wheel over a glass fish tank. There appear to be eels inside. Carlos reaches in and grabs one in each hand. He swings them around by their tails, building speed. Suddenly, he flings them forward. They swish through the air and coil like bolas around the necks of Spectacles and the old man. Immediately, their heads light up like fireworks. They're electric eels. The Japanese grab desperately, trying to wrench the eels from their necks. Fatty watches his mates in horror. Electric bolts are shooting out of their ears. Their eyes light up like torches. Then they collapse to the ground. Fatty stares in stunned silence. 
Laszlo studies his reaction, then turns his attention to the women. Helen stares up at him defiantly. Without a word, he ambles over to her, real close. Enola gazes up at his towering frame. Laszlo glances at Enola, then back to Helen. Eye to eye, he smiles. If you so much as touch her, I'll rip your balls clear out of the sack. Laszlo looks at her for a moment, chuckles, <laughs> laughs a little, then guffaws in a great <laughs> roar. <laughs> Cut to extreme close-up, a water drop. Pear-shaped, swelling, it reaches the critical mass and falls, disintegrating on impact, landing on human skin, somebody's nose. We follow as the rivulet drops down the bridge and falls again off the nose tip. Widen. The nose belongs to Helen. Her head is strapped in the harness of some kind of torture chair. A water reservoir suspended above drivels out single drops of drinking water, tantalizing down her nose, passing millimeters from her lips. It's high noon and she sure could use a drink, but any movement of her jaw pulls the hinged door of another reservoir, releasing a stream of salt onto her face. Great mirrors have been set up around her to focus additional sunlight on her. The heat is intense. Drip. 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 Helen can't stand it any longer. She opens her mouth for a drink, but an avalanche of salt pours out. She gags. I don't know anything. The salt pours on. She spits through it. Let me cope, please. More salt. She gags. Where's Nola? Let me, let me see her. Her mouth is foaming up with salt. Helen shuts her eyes, tears streaming down her flushed cheeks. Laszlo has her where he wants her. He strolls up and removes the salt harness. What does the tattoo mean? I don't know. I swear. Please, please don't hurt her. Let me see her, please. What's the glass circle for? I don't know anything. Please. I swear. Laszlo turns to his men. Take her down. Call the dock. Cut to Laszlo's yacht. It is a huge boat with jarringly eclectic decor. Though generally nautical in theme, there is everything from arabesque ottomans to Chinese screens, all arranged in the epitome of ostentation. Anola is seated in a plush chair, nervous. Helmet stands behind her. The sound of breaking glass. Ah, shit. Angle on, the dock. An obese quack with jaundiced skin and rotting teeth. He is fumbling over a cart of surgical instruments. Where the fuck is that piece of shit needle? Ugh. He's shaking like an addict in rehab. He plunges his plump hand into a pile of medical hardware, spilling several probes onto the floor and finds a huge trocar syringe. Old and rusted. Hold the fucking fish! Please, sir. Laszlo moves in and steadies a flapping Purikuru fish with his enormous hands. The dock guides the formidable syringe towards the puffer, but his hands are shaking epileptically. It's in the liver. Oh, I know, I know, I fucking know. Abruptly, he plunges the needle into the fish and withdraws a full vial of slimy greenish fluid. Anola watches in horror as the fish ceases to struggle. Now it's her turn. She screams as Helmet holds her arm and the dock injects her with the green bile. She struggles, lashes out, weakens. Her eyes droop. Laszlo moves close to her. Can you hear me? Yes. Tell me about the tattoo. Oh, ouch, hurts, ow. She begins to cry, not a little whimper. It's a baby, bawling. Who did it? What does it mean? She sobs and screams, ignoring him. What about the glass pendant? Pretty. Two circles. Baby likes glass. Lucky amulet. Two lenses. That's the secret. Two? Where's the second? The, the drifter. He saved me. Laszlo turns to Helmet with a smile. Smash cut to Fatty looking unhappy. Wind and water splash onto his face. A huge wave engulfs him. He gags. Pull back. It's keel hauling. He's been strapped to the underside of a bow. 
a cigarette boat blasting over the waves at full throttle. 45 knots of water bludgeons his face like a sledgehammer. Fatty is taking a serious pounding. Reveal, a small pirate assault fleet ripping across the open sea in the golden light of dawn. Laszlo and Helmet are on the lead ship. We're close enough. Release the bird. Helmet picks up a small cage. Inside there is a bird identical to the one we've seen. Helmet opens the door and grabs it. He hurls it straight up in the air. The bird surges up some 75 feet, circles a few times to get its bearing, then begins to fly due west. Alter course to 270 degrees. The formation swings to starboard. Cut to the Miranda. Morgan is fast asleep in his hammock. There is a fluttering sound. Morgan opens his eyes and notices the bird. He blinks a few times. Is this a dream? Then suddenly it dawns on him. He leaps up. On the deck, Morgan picks up his spyglass, scans the horizon. Nothing. But now there's a distant sound. Approaching engines. Morgan points his scope eastwards towards the sound. In the spyglass POV, the early morning sun makes the ocean shimmer. Mirage-like, barely visible through the undulating ripples, a fleet of vessels advance. On Morgan, he is momentarily stunned. It's finally happening. Abruptly, Morgan begins to rush around the barge, preparing for the imminent attack. He leads his horse to the stern edge, pushes him off. Go on, get out of here. The horse stares at him blankly, treading water. Impulsively, Morgan takes the amulet from his neck, leans down, and puts it around that of the horse. You'll need all the luck you can get. He smacks its rear and the horse begins to swim away. Morgan races to the barrels, sets the booby trap. He rushes to a locker, pulls out the oxygen container, grabs his spear gun, loads two bolts, and pumps it up. A belt of extra ammo. He tosses all the gear into a small, tight-weave net. On the pirates, almost within striking distance, four vessels in all. On Morgan, he grabs some fish from his drying rack. Fish? He hacks it up with a machete until the fish bleeds. What's he up to? Morgan tosses this into a second net. Now he ties both nets into bundles, attaches them to separate painter lines. The sound of automatic gunfire. Ricochets rip into the wooden hull. Morgan ducks and quickly tosses both nets overboard. Bullets spray over his head. Morgan keeps his cool. He reaches for a rag, a stick, ties them together, and raises the white flag. Hold your fire! The shooting stops. Morgan stands there, arms raised in surrender. The pirate vessels heave to along the barge. A pirate jumps aboard with an M60. I give up. Don't kill me. Easy, Drifter. Easy. Suddenly, Morgan's jaw drops. He stares at the pirate in front of him. The eyes. One blue, one green. God, can it be? Extreme close-up, Morgan's eyes. Staring, thinking back. Flashback. A young Morgan, in the ocean, bleeding, swallowing mouthfuls of water, he calls out. Blake! Jump! Quick! His POV. A small barge surrounded by pirate ships. The little boy is sobbing over the body of his mother. Laszlo, looking maybe 15 years younger, moves up behind him. He yanks the boy viciously by the hair. A large wave sweeps Morgan back, slamming his head against a floating timber. The POV submerges underwater. He sinks and sinks. Struggling to swim, he kicks desperately, pulling himself back up, breaks the surface just in time to see... Boom! The barge exploding in a massive fireball as pirate ships retreat. Back to the present. Morgan's eyes tell it all. He never saw his son actually die. Search this thing. It's Laszlo. Morgan stares at him with venom. Pirates begin to poke around the barge. Helmet is guarding Morgan with a gun. Morgan signals him with his eyes. Blake? Helmet stares blankly. It's me. Don't you recognize me? Laszlo saunters over. What's he saying? I don't know, father. Father? Morgan can barely believe his ears. He sees Laszlo, the cape of feathers. His heart is pounding. Laszlo holds up the large amulet with a pleasant smile. We're looking for this. Can you help us? Morgan is silent. Torture him. Immediately, Morgan is restrained by Carlos and Dieter, who pinces his arm with his prosthetic hand clamp. Get me the vice. The pirate hands him a small instrument of torture, what seems to be a large cigar cutter joined with two twisting nutcrackers. 
He holds it up in front of Morgan's face. This'll turn you into a woman, asshole. Morgan stares back, eyes pleading for recognition. He's not your father. You know that, don't you? Helmet swings the metal vice across Morgan's face, drawing blood. You want to lose your dick, old man? Meanwhile, Laszlo has been poking around the barrels. He reaches out to pull off the lid. Close angle, Laszlo's fingers, reaching for the booby trap, any second. Wait! On Morgan, totally flustered, bewildered. It's... uh, it's booby trapped. I... uh... Suddenly, Morgan ducks down, wriggling free from the pirate's grips. He scrambles towards the edge. Helmet fires but misses. Morgan leaps overboard. The shark! Carlos moves towards the submerged cage. He opens the door. A shark fin shoots out after Morgan. The water foams up with blood. The shark thrashes wildly, relishing the kill. Underwater, we see Morgan unharmed. He's released the bundled net of bleeding fish scraps. The shark is attacking the decoy. Morgan grabs the oxygen canister from the other net, sucks in some air. He can see distorted figures moving around on his boat, but now he sees something dangling underwater near the edge of the boat. The horse! They've found it! A muffled gunshot. The water reddens with blood. The horse goes limp. Morgan's face becomes contorted in agony. Above, Laszlo leans down and yanks the amulet off the floating carcass of the horse. How convenient. Pull it out before the shark gets it. His men haul the bleeding horse aboard. They really prefer people. He gestures towards Dieter, who grabs Fatty and pushes him overboard. He screams as the shark converges. They watch the feeding frenzy with glee. Then Carlos spools in the shark leash, hauling it back into its cage. Let's move out. Morgan, underwater. He can see them dragging the dead horse onto a boat, loading booty, Morgan looks around, he grabs one of the nets, cuts some holes into it with his spear gun tip. He slips his arms and legs through the holes. It's a makeshift harness. Morgan dives deeper and swims under one of the pirate vessels. He ties the net off to the eye hooks on the keel. He pulls the oxygen valve into his mouth and waits. Above, one by one, the pirate vessels begin to peel off. Underwater, Morgan is pulled along under the belly of one of them. He's hitching a ride. Laszlo's boat. It's idling some distance from the Miranda. Laszlo turns back with his bazooka. Fires. A colossal explosion. The boat splinters into a million pieces, soaring 200 feet into the air. He wasn't lying about the booby trap. But why did he tell us? The question hangs there as the shrapnel rains down around them, splashing into the ocean. And we... Dissolve to Pirate Prison Stockade, night. Wanda is looking through the steel bars of the small porthole window. There's the sound of laughter and music. She turns to her cellmates, Helen, Angel, and Enola. Now's the time to make our move. No doubt about it. It's some kind of celebration. Let me take a look. Wanda moves aside so Helen can see. Oh, God. What is it? No, Enola, stay away. But Enola pushes up for a glimpse. POV through the window. All the pirates are gathered on the distant tower platform, converged around something roasting on a fire. An unmistakable silhouette. It's the horse. On Enola, a look of agonized horror. Oh no. They killed the drifter. It's all my fault. (laughs) On the platform, a one-eyed goon slaps his buddy on the back. When's the last time you tasted animal? Never. Yeah, it's better than snuff sex. We pan around the group of feasting pirates and reveal Laszlo on his throne, helmet at his side. Eat up, my sons. You deserve it. He holds up the glass amulets in triumph. Now, we have the secret to water's end. The pirates cheer. Laszlo turns to helmet. Put these lenses in my safe. Tomorrow, we'll figure out how they work. Helmet walks away with the lenses. In a nearby group, the doc glances around nervously, then discreetly withdraws into the shadows. We tilt down into the murky water below the platform. A dark figure pops his head up. It's Morgan. His POV. Several dozen boats surround the platform, a veritable maze of canals between them. 
pirates jump from boat to boat, converging towards the main attraction, roasting animal flesh. Morgan glances at Laszlo for a moment, then looks the other way and spots Helmet making his way up the ramp of Laszlo's impressive yacht, about fifty yards dead across the canal. On Morgan? Should be easy enough. He takes a deep breath and dives. Underwater. Ten yards, twenty, slow but steady progress. A stern boarding ladder dead ahead. Smooth underwater breath stroke, but now, from behind, a guard shark converging like a torpedo. Morgan doubles his effort. Ten more yards to the ladder. Will he make it? The shark closes in. Morgan strokes as fast as he can. The shark opens his jaws. Morgan reaches desperately. The shark lunges for his leg, but twang! Stops inches short. It's on a leash. The stunned shark backs off in frustration, tries to lunge again, but the leash stops it just shy of Morgan on the ladder. Morgan catches his breath, climbs up. Laszlo's Yacht It's a rope ladder on the stern. Morgan looks up, 30 feet to the main deck. Will he be noticed? He starts up, rung by rung. He looks to his left. All the pirates are focused on the impending feast. A few more rungs. He looks up. A young pirate staring right down at him. It's Troy, patrolling the deck. Morgan looks at him. Will he sound the alarm? Troy hesitates. Get over here, boy. I ain't done with you yet. Troy backs off. Morgan breathes a sigh of relief. He climbs up to the rail and peers over. Troy is following Carlos, who's carrying a pair of swords. Morgan waits until they're out of sight and quietly hauls himself onto the deck. Cut two. meanwhile, on the stern of the stockade boat. The dock climbs on board with a lecherous smile. He addresses a seated guard. <laughs> Who's available? All of them. Everyone just wants the animal tonight. <laughs> I'll take the feisty one. <laughs> the dock hands him something round and shiny. A pearl. The guard bites into it. Satisfied of its authenticity, he drops it in a small cash box with a half dozen other pearls. He unlocks the stockade. Help yourself. Inside, the doc enters with a big grin. Helen smiles back at him. I hope it's me you want. The doc can hardly believe his ears. He approaches her. But Wanda leaps out and loops her manacles around his neck, breaking it with a sickening crack. Wow, that kind of turned me on. Angel grabs the keys. Quickly, they unlock their chains. Outside, the guard is staring idly at the roasting horse and surrounding activity. Behind him, the door creaks open. Oh, talk about a quickie. Helen sneaks out, reaching for his knife. It's sheathed on his hip. Helen's fingertips stretch towards the knife handle. Suddenly, he turns. Helen yanks out the knife and plants it in his ribs. His uh. eyes lock open in frozen shock. I hate quickies. On Laszlo's yacht, two sentries are patrolling the main deck. One of them spots something ahead. Well, looky here. It's a feather attached to a scrap of cloth. He reaches down for it, but it moves suddenly, eluding his grasp. He lunges, but again it skitters away from him, around the corner. The sentry frowns. It is just the night breezes. He stomps after it. Around the corner, it's Morgan playing the old monofilament trick. He reels in the feather, the sentry comes after it, and in a flash, the nylon becomes a garrote around his neck. With the other sentry, waiting on his friend's return, a voice comes from around the corner. Hey, come see this. He frowns. Something fishy here. He unsheathes his dagger, edges up to the corner, pauses back to the wall, peeking. In his POV, a glimpse of a body lying motionless on the deck. Someone got his buddy. His instincts were right. It's a trap. The ambusher must be waiting just like he is, back to the wall, right on the other side of the corner. The sentry readies his knife. Then suddenly, lunges around the corner. The knife connects with flesh. The ambusher collapses in his arms. But it's not Morgan. It's the first sentry propped into a standing position. Morgan is the guy on the ground, playing dead. He grabs the second sentry by the ankle, twists him down onto the deck. His head slams down on the ground. Out cold. Cut to Laszlo's quarters. Helmet walks across the ostentatious owner's cabin towards a safe on one far wall, amulets dangling from his neck. He starts to dial in the combination. Stop! Helmet turns to find Morgan, aiming his spear gun at him. You again! 
Yeah, you can't run away from me. That scar on your left arm? You've had it all your life, right? How could I know that? Because you were a baby when it happened. Helmet looks at the scar. Was that just a lucky guess? He attacked us. Killed your mother. I thought you were dead, but he must have taken you. You have to remember that. I know you do. Helmet suddenly drops to his knees, covering his face in his hands. Oh, God. Morgan approaches him softly, hand outstretched. But suddenly, Helmet lashes out, swatting the spear gun from his hand. He slugs him in the jaw with a right, left, and then a great headbutt in the forehead that sends Morgan reeling silly to the floor. Should have died the first time, Drifter. Now I'm going to make it really hurt. Helmet kicks him in the gut. Morgan groans. Sorry, Pops. Just my rebellious phase. Another kick sends Morgan's jaw snapping sideways like a mousetrap. Blood gushes down from his nose. His fingers stretch out for the spear gun. Helmet stomps down on his hand. But now Morgan wrenches his ankle out from under him. Same move as with the sentry. Helmet crashes down to the ground. Morgan grabs his gun and bonks him on the head, knocking him out. Cut two, somewhere in the flotilla. Morgan is dragging Helmet's unconscious body through the shadowy platforms. Morgan has disguised himself with pirate war paint and headgear. There are voices. Morgan freezes. A couple of pirates round the bend. Sucking on horse ribs, they spot Morgan and the body. Hey, what's this? <laughs> Too much kelp cider. I'm putting him to bed. Helmet doesn't drink. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you're not used to it. Well, who the hell are you? I ain't seen you before. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You must have been drinking too, huh? The pair eye him suspiciously. Morgan tries to keep grinning. Then... <sighs> Fuck this. He blasts two rounds with his spear gun, bullseye in both hearts. Cut to the training platform. We are in a remote corner of the flotilla, a 20-foot dueling ring surrounded by a margin of broken glass shards. Carlos and Troy are sparring with two-handed swords. Troy can barely lift his weapon, while Carlos slashes effortlessly through the air with his good hand. Clang! Troy retreats. He barely blocked that last one. Again, the sword comes slashing around. Clang! Troy's feet are inches from the deadly glass perimeter. Come on! Are you going to die like your friends? Clang! Troy's arms are weakening. Keep your sword up, you little wimp! Clang! That one sends Troy limping backwards. He screams as the glass cuts up his feet. Carlos lowers his sword. You had enough! Troy nods, lowers his sword. Whoosh! Here comes the blade! Troy ducks in the nick of time. The sword swishes a hair's width above his head. Never let down your guard, you hopeless moron. I ought to kill you right now. Troy begins to tremble slightly. He's breaking. <laughs> Carlos laughs sadistically. <laughs> you belong with the women. But then, a huge sword comes bursting through his abdomen. Carlos goes bug-eyed, gurgles blood, collapses. Fucking... Sexist! She looks down at his frozen body. Troy breaks into a big grin. Angel smiles back, grabs his hand. Let's get out of here. Troy looks down at Carlos's body. Never let down your guard, asshole. Cut to the fueling dock. Wanda, Helen, and Enola, armed with clubs and other weapons, are sneaking along the shadowy platform along which the attack cigarette boats are moored. They pause behind several dozen oil drums of fuel. There is the distinct sound of the ongoing celebration. Helen looks around. The coast seems clear. Helen points to a boat. Let's take the yellow one. She turns to Wanda. You take care of the goodbye present. Helen crawls around the barrel and comes face to face with a sentry. She slams him with the club, but he ducks, pinning her against the barrels, which avalanche down. He raises his spear gun and stops, recognizing her. It's Morgan. Surprised to see me, huh? I thought you were dead. Other people make that mistake too. Enola peeks around and sees Morgan. She runs up and gives him a hug, but Morgan pushes her off. Enola looks hurt. I knew I should have killed you right off. You show people some mercy and they go and stab you in the back. 
angle on helmet. Is his little finger twitching slightly? What are you talking about? Close, on Wanda. She pokes her head out from hiding. You two at it again? You ever consider marriage counseling? Just rig those booby traps, will you? Wanda smirks and pulls out a fishing net. She starts to cut it up into small squares with the knife. Oh, a quick getaway now. Real smooth plan. Almost too smart for your own good. As Morgan and Helen continue arguing, we follow Enola, who has spotted the glass amulets on Helmet's neck. Her eyes light up. <gasps> oh, both of them. They really are lucky. She kneels down beside Helmet, reaches out to pull them off, leaning dangerously close. You think I'm up to something? Say it. Don't play innocent with me. You set me up with the pirates. Made some sweet little deal. And now this is the big double cross. Just remember one thing, lady. Pirates don't think too much when they're mad. They just kill. One of the amulet chains is stuck. Enola struggles to lift Helmet's torso. Did he just blink slightly? I set you up? <laughs> don't flatter yourself, Drifter. I'd have been lucky to get half a jug of hydro for you. Suddenly, Helmet's hand springs up around Enola's neck. He's come alive. Enola screams. <laughs> Helmet is strangling her with the amulets. Morgan turns. Helen pulls out the gun, aims it at Helmet's head. She fires, but Morgan dives at her arm, sending the gun flying into the water. Helen glares at him. That's my son! Helen looks at him in utter bewilderment. Cut to the tower platform. Laszlo spins suddenly towards the sound of gunfire. He turns to a large goon. What was that? The goon shrugs. Where's Helmet? The goon shrugs again. Get a patrol out there, now! Cut back to the fueling platform. Now Helmet is standing up, holding Enola hostage in a chokehold. Everybody freeze! Hands up, real slow! They comply. You too. He points to Wanda, who's been busy loading extra fuel drums on the yellow boat. Wanda stands up and looks at him. Now... We're all going back to join the celebration. Single file. Wanda hesitates. Move it, or I'll kill her! Please, Wanda! Hey, it's every drifter for themselves. I don't even like the kid. Good, because I'm going to break her little neck. Enola screams. Ah! Helmet starts to twist the glass medallions, tightening the chains around Enola's neck. No! No! Enola's face is turning blue when... Bonk! Helmet falls down, unconscious. It's Troy and Angel. Bet you were wondering when they'd show up. I'm ready to leave now. Helen rushes towards Enola. She picks her up and carries her into the yellow boat. Wanda is already at the controls. She fires it up. Angel and Troy jump in. Morgan hesitates on the dock, looking down at Helmet. Let's go! Wanda slams the boat into gear, but Enola covers the throttle. Wait! The drifter! That guy? Looks like a pirate. He is. No! He saved my life! Come on, quick! Now, half a dozen armed pirates spill onto a nearby platform. Across the canal, they spot them. Hey, hold it! Helen pulls Enola's hand off the throttle. Get moving! The boat begins to pull away. Morgan stares at it, frozen. He looks back at Helmet. Gunfire erupts around him. The pirates are closing in. Kill them! Shoot! Morgan looks at him. Looks at Helmet, thinking. Suddenly, Morgan turns towards the yellow boat. He runs to the edge of the platform and dives, but his hand misses the rail. Enola throws him the stern line. He grabs the rope. Wanda kicks it into full power, and the boat surges out towards the open sea, dragging Morgan along behind. The pirates converge on the platform and jump into pursuit vehicles. Engines roar to life. A pirate throws his into gear, and there is a calamitous groan. He looks back towards the outboard. Wait! Net's in the props! But no one can hear him over the sound of engines. The other boats start up and foul their propellers. In the ocean, the yellow boat speeds out into the black night, leaving the pirate flotilla far back in its wake. Morgan has hauled himself aboard. He looks exhausted. Empty. Helen turns to him. I thought your son was dead. He is. Aerial Angle the wake of the moon seems to race along with the tiny boat as they head out into the vast ocean. Cut the engines when we're out of eyesight. If they can't hear us, they'll never find us at night. Dissolve to the next day. 
Everyone's asleep except Angel, and she's yawning. It's just daybreak. The yellow boat is drifting alone. Angel moves up to Helen, gives her a nudge. She leaps up, ready to fight. Whoa, kiddo, it's dawn, that's all. Mm, you see anything? Nah, 360 of flat and clear. What about him? An intense sky. Nightmares all night. You sure know how to pick them, sis. Shut up, will you? How much petrol? About 200 miles worth. Let's go south. The Mad Max Minute podcast is a fan project by Rick and Julia Ingham. Our opening music is by Daniel Batista. Our website is madmaxminute.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Mad Max Minute. Like us on Facebook by searching for Mad Max Minute. And support the podcast by visiting patreon.com slash madmaxmin. Narration by Rick Ingham. Morgan, the Mariner, was played by Garrett Lampkin. Julia Risto as Helen. Enola was played by Ashley Serrano. Laszlo, played by David Cook. Angel was played by Luca Miller. Wanda was played by Delany Bolina. Troy is played by Chaz McPeak. Carlos, played by Derek Alvarez. Doc was played by R.C. O'Hare. With Helmet, played by Mitch Zander. Thank you for listening to part two of Water's End, and stay tuned for part three, The Battle for Dryland. 